Hello. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk about the Green Mile, which, as I said last week, this film is 20 years old this year. Um, and um, this would have been this is my second favorite R-rated film I saw, and I was it might have been six, might have been five or six. I was five when I saw the Shawshank Redemption. Since uh, I saw that on TV, I know it was unedited and you know, everything because of the violence that was in it and the language. I remember hearing at five for that movie, and same with this. Um, this is a very good film. My second favorite Stephen King adaptation. Um, well, Shawshank, as I said last week, is my favorite. Perhaps Shawshank being number one could be seen as a cliche since it's been like the number one film for a long time on IMDb. For many years it was like the highest rated. Um, but yeah, I just, I love that film. And I love this film. Uh, you know, the story of prison guard. You know, uh, uh, along the Green Mile, as they call it, since it's like the last walk they'll ever make uh, up to their execution. The electric chair. You know. Um, you know, for... Uh, you know, and for... the kind of... Uh, The kind kind of environment uh, they're in, uh, it's a fairly uh, uh, it's not overtly bleak as one might think. You know, the prisoners are on death row. <clears throat> Keep them there for you know however long they are until the day of execution. Um, and you know. Obviously, there are things, you know, that are quite sad uh, and unfortunate, obviously, particularly with one of the main characters, uh, played by Michael Clark Duncan, which this film was his big break. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, he is incredible. Got an Academy Award nomination. I think he should have won, uh, personally, uh, for this film. But, you know, um, uh, uh, everybody has a different, uh, you know, different take on things like, uh, like awards. Um, this is just an incredible film. Uh, Tom Hanks is great, as he often is as he usually is, you know, he's always somebody who you can expect a good performance to come from him. Um, even in some films he might not be, that might not be good that he's in. You know, he's one who's, you could tell, always does his best, um, regardless of the final product. And in this film, he's really stellar. Um, other cast includes, um, Sam Rockwell as a prisoner, um, Gary Sinise, who's working with uh, Tom Hanks again, uh, since uh, you know they worked together on Forrest Gump, and they worked together in um, Apollo 13. Uh, they don't have much screen time, um, but they're very good, regardless. Um, Frank Darabont is the writer and director of this film again, and is also now a producer on this film. Um, this, uh, uh, like, I want to say f five volumes or, or something of books that um, cap encapsulates the Green Mile. Um, and then I'll also explain why it's over three hours long. It's a very, it's a very long movie, but it's well worth it all the way to the end. Um, James Cromwell is also in this film as 
We have uh, Graham Greene and Larry Pepper, um, Jeffrey Jeffrey Demun, um, Mary Dean Stanton. Um, the cast is just incredible. Um, you know, John Coffey is somebody who you know he's a he's a big guy, you know, be very intimidating, and yet it's one of the most uh, kindest uh, people you could ever meet. And then when you find out what he's convicted of <clears throat> while he's on uh, death there for uh, death row, you're sort of surprised. Uh, but by the film, as the film goes on, you see what really happened. And, you know, he, he didn't do anything. Spoiler alert. Uh, though I think this film is very well known. And also with how things have gone. And how, um, Tom Hanks's character, you know, uh, feels about all this. He, you know, he he's, he's feels a lot of regret, and he's telling this story to uh, in a retirement home to one of his friends. And it sounds very hard to believe, um, you know, but he, you know, he feels a lot of guilt for it. But you know, he had to do his job, and um, it's unfortunate. It's one of those films that at the end you're it's sort of like a, like a tearjerker like it's one of those sad endings you wish didn't happen or it didn't happen the way it went in the movie and it could have gone some other direction yet it's one of those that's like you know but then again it's also you know the times you know it was a time when things like that, you know, with you know, with race and all that, there's a lot of tension and all. So, since Michael Clark Duncan's character, John Coffey, he found those two dead girls, he was crying, you know. Oh, he's there. They're dead. So we did it. He 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 killed them and. You know, other stuff to them, and it's just horrible. And he had to do it because he was there. If he didn't do it, he wouldn't have been there. Um, and we find out who did do it, and well, they die. <laughs> I guess since I've already gotten a spoiler already, uh, you know, Sam Rockwell's character essentially. Um, yeah, he did it, and but John Coffey got blamed, so. Well, he was killed, and there's a interesting mystical element to this film, which is interesting. You know, John Coffey's able to help people take a sickness and all this stuff and uh, way like you know, because uh, Tom Hanks can't go to the bathroom or he can't relieve himself, uh, but thanks to John Coffey, he can, and he's able to help cure or. Not necessarily cure, but just take away whatever is ailing them, and they're, you know, healthy again. They're like a miracle worker, they help you know, some Alice Mister Jingles, and um, back to life after he's killed, and you, hold, you you take a hold of his hand and you're able to see things, and well, he uh, shows. Tom Hanks, what happened, and uh, why he ended up the way he, or where he is now, and it's just a sad story. This man who would never harm anyone, is convicted of a horrible crime that he didn't commit, but, you know, he's like, you know, we gotta, gotta go through with this, and plus also, how would they believe him? I mean, unless you get... Uh, whoever would overturn that to come down and release him and then you know uh, be able to show everybody or uh, them in particular 
for the decision of him not to be yelled, executed. And that would be a hard sell, honestly. Yeah. And then also to all the people in town they all, who want him dead, the family of the little girl, the girls, and um, <clears throat> and other people who heard of this horrible crime and want, essentially want justice to be done. And unfortunately, um, I mean, well, justice was done to the person uh, who did the crime, but um, they'll never really know that. You know, and it's one of those things they, they can't know that. And, you know, in his old age, he keeps living, and says all uh, Tom Hanks's character keeps go, he keeps going and living. He says, you know, perhaps it's because you know of what he did that day. You know, having to execute John Coffey. He know he, he knows he shouldn't have, but he also had to do his job, and he could not not do it. So he's very conflicted, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just a very good film, and you know, it's an interesting thing that he thinks maybe like God is somewhat punishing him for this. Like, you know, one day he will die, but you know, all the friends he's had over the years, they all die. He outlives his wife, his friend he told this story to. By the end, she passes away. And it's like, you know, he might even get to see his grandchildren become adults. And, you know, maybe just before, you know, his kids are almost middle-aged or almost to retirement age, maybe he'll die then. It's interesting that he thinks perhaps God is sort of punishing him in this way, like let this innocent man uh, be executed. You know, even though it was your job and you had to, you know, you didn't try to do anything to prevent this from happening. Because well, honestly, you know, it would have been a hard again a hard sell to have people, and you have to have problems so many. So because if they didn't, if they didn't. Uh, do the execution, they, uh, and if, he, if John Coffey was released, he used to say um, a mob wouldn't come after John Coffey and have gone in after him. It's very possible. So uh, he'd have to show everybody what happened. And, you know, it's just a, it's a film that's a, it's an incredible film. It's a very good film. It's also just sad. Um, I love this movie. Uh, you know, one of the best films of 1999 for me, for sure. Um, it'd be at the top. I've never really done a list of all, of really, of individual years, honestly. At least not that far back. I mean, I have lists of what my top films of, like, of this decade and even some in the early, <laughs> of the late 2000s, and working back a bit, but I've never done that with uh, 1999, I don't know. Green Mile would definitely be up in the top five, if not top three, be definitely top five for me. <coughs> so yeah, another Stephen King uh, adaptation by Frank Darabont. <coughs> Darabont's an incredible filmmaker, and he really gets Stephen King's um, material. He's able to adapt them so well. They do justice to the uh, source material, <coughs> so people who are fans of <coughs> source material don't have to worry about uh, about um, Darabont going even possibly left field out of nowhere just for ent <coughs> entertainment value. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I also had um, some hard candy, something to help uh, with this. Sort of helping, but still a bit of a cough there. Upshot is it's uh, getting a lot better, so... You've been around for a while, you'll know I've uh, had a bit of a cold 
but it is going away. It might <coughs> might not sound exactly like it is, but it is. So, yeah. The Grey Mile. Very good film. Uh, sort of gave the basic premise, because I don't know. It's like, sort of like Shawshank. Words can't really exactly do justice. Just watch the movie. Watch The Green Mile. It is three hours, so maybe on a weekend or some day you have free time for sure. If you've never seen it. Though I'm sure you have if you've watched this, but... I've also noticed something that's interesting that... I heard something where if a movie is spoiled for you... Or a book is spoiled for you or whatever... How everything ends up to that point is what's really exciting. And then when you see how it all unfolds, even the part you know what happens, like it's how it ends, the spoiler part, it can still be very surprising and encapsulated. So even if you've never seen this and you've just stumbled upon this and you are, <coughs> are a bit surprised by what I'm saying, <coughs> Regarding Michael Clark Duncan's character and what his fate is, there's so much more I haven't even touched on. So I think I find that interesting, honestly. Um, <coughs> especially if it's true, which I'm not going to say it isn't, but I find it interesting. So keep that in mind. Maybe me uh, telling you his fate as well as the fate of the guy who did the crime. Perhaps uh, you will enjoy it just as much if you knew nothing going in. So, yeah. Well, that's all I got for now. Uh, so, till next time, have a good day. Have a good week. <coughs> have a good week. <coughs> and <clears throat> I'll see you all next time. Hopefully not coughing as much.